Buddy, I'm Richard Oldner. Welcome to the channel. Please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff before we even get going so you get notified every time I do these tests. Today, let's talk about plug gap. Let's check out a test I did comparing 10,000s plug gap, which is probably not enough, to 100,000s plug gap, which is probably too much. Or is it? Before we get going on our plug gap test, we need to take a look at our test motor. And our test motor was an L33 all aluminum 5.3 liter that I got from the wrecking yard. It was equipped with a Brian Tooley Racing valve spring upgrade. It also had a Brian Tooley Racing red hot camshaft in it. And I'll go ahead and put the specs up here so you can see what the specs are on that camshaft. I'm also doing another video comparing that camshaft to a couple of other more common ones because the red hot cam is kind of new. So you'll be looking at that later on. But we also ran long tube headers, ran the Holly HP management system. We ran the stock truck intake and stock truck throttle body. We ran 80 pound injectors, which were more than enough for doing what we were doing. We had NGK plugs on this thing. And then we varied the gap from 10,000s to 20,000s to 100,000s to find out if there was any change in power from plug gap. Let's check it out. Turn our fan, fuel pump. Make sure the electric water pump's on. Now that we've established our baseline, let's go in and put some plug gap in that thing. We're gonna put a bunch in there, like a hundred thousands. So the first thing we're gonna do, pull all the plugs out, we're gonna check the gap, and then we're going to increase it like up to a hundred thousands and see if we get misfire. Almost got me. So we got our four plugs out. Now all we gotta do is we're gonna go out and pull the other four on the other side, check the gap, see where they are, and then adjust accordingly. Okay, so I took the spark plug out that we had in there, measured it. I had them set at about 21 thousandths because before we had run this thing with a supercharger, I'll go ahead and show you a photo of the supercharger. We ran it with that um, positive displacement blower with the adapter from Tom DeMuse from DeMuse Engineering. That's why the plug gap was down so far. But I'm going to show you, I'll give you an idea. It'll be too hard to see here. I'm going to go ahead and post a picture up here, but you can kind of see what the, <laughs> you can see from the photo. The difference between where that was at 21 thousandths and 100 thousandths gap, so you can see the picture, the picture I have here, it's a lot of gap. So we're going to put that in and see if it runs. Stacking a bunch of the fueler gauges together to equal 100 thousandths. Keep it at 100. So we've got our gap plugs. We're going to put them in, see if it even starts. Let's get going. Fan 
Fingers crossed. Now it's time to see if it will start. It's all ready. Plugs are in. 100,000 scamp. Back to the control room. Let's see if it starts. Whoa. First, I got to turn on the water, though. Whoa, 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 whoa. Er, got to push some buttons. And, and we're on, and we're on. We'll get it running. See what happens. Fingers crossed. Let's see if it starts. That will be step one. Yeah, we're live. temperature in it. We'll see if it'll take a wide open throttle pull. Stabilize the water temperature. Take her back up. Let's see what she's got. Now we've got 10,000 plug gap. Let's see how this one works. Got to get the temperature down. Well, it starts. That's good. That's a good start. Yep. Sorry, any puns. Okay guys, after showing you all of the plug swapping and the gapping and running our motor on the dyno, let's jump right to the results and find out how well they did because I basically what I want to do is run two extremes. We ran the plug gap all the way down to 10 thousandths, which is certainly less than you would ever run on almost any application, even on a high horsepower, super high boost turbo application. And we ran 100 thousandths, which is more than you would run basically on any combination. I want to see that basically covers the whole spread. So let's find out how we did here. First of all, we ran our 5.3 liter test motor with just 10 thousandths plug gap. And it produced a peak of 453.5 horsepower. And I'm going to give it to you in the decimal point because we're kind of splitting hairs here, which is an interesting story all in it itself. And 414 0.2 foot pounds of torque. Here's what happened when I ran it the way that I normally do with about 21 thousandths plug gap on it. It picked up a little bit of power, but again, we're kind of splitting hairs here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit so we can get a little bit better idea here. 
But this one produced 454 horsepower. Uh, yeah, right at 454.1. So I get, again, we're just wiggling it around. Almost no change at all. But things did change when we installed a hundred thousandths gap. So we'll take a look at that one. Oddly enough, and I did not expect this going in, the hundred thousandths plug gap made the most power. So <laughs> apparently more plug gap equals more power. And we jumped all the way up to 456.2 horsepower. And it also had the highest peak torque of 417 foot pounds. The median area where I ran 21 thousandths or so, there wasn't a big change between 100 thousandths and that. So we'll get rid of that one. But if you look at the difference, there is a decided difference between 10 thousandths plug gap and a hundred thousandths plug gap. So 10 thousandths seems to be not quite enough and 10 thousandths probably is overkill, but in this case, it did actually pick up a little bit of power. So there you have it, add plug gap and you can add power. But again, the thing is, we're not talking about big gains. I've had guys tell me in comments and, and discussions that we've had, oh yeah, we changed the plug gap. We picked up 10 or 20 horsepower. No, you really didn't. Unless something else was going on, we did a big swing here. We went from 10 thousandths to 100 thousandths, and we're talking at the very most here. We've got about five, maybe six horsepower. So there you have it. That's what plug gap is actually worth. <laughs> okay, guys, what'd you think about our test on plug gap going from 10 thousandths to 100,000, obviously this was on an NA motor, and this by no means is the end all be all discussion on plug gap, but in this test we did show that it made within five or six horsepower going from one extreme to the other. Now another interesting test, please make a comment and let me know, because I expect this comment to happen. What would happen if we were to test 30 or 40 or 45 or 50 thousandths plug gap? Could we get everything that the 100 thousandths plug gap gave us, but at a more realistic plug gap that we would actually run while driving around? And that's an interesting question, and that may be another test for another day. Here's the important part, and this is really the reason that I did this test, because I've had people actually tell me, hey, you could pick up like 10 or 20 horsepower just by changing the plug gap, you know, bigger kernel, and it throws it out there earlier, and yada, 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 all of these discussions. The reality is we showed, we went from two extremes. We went from not nearly enough to probably too much, and we really only changed it by maybe five or six horsepower in those two extreme situations. If you have enough plug gap, the difference was knocked down to maybe two or something, but it did show that there was something there, which I like. I was actually pleasantly surprised by this test. I didn't think we would show anything. I thought we could get all the way up to the point where there was just nothing but misfire, and then we would see no change in power, but guess what? That's why you test. Armature holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.